Hello everyone, in this video we are just going to discuss about the various sequences of file generation in C program. Let's get started. So on the screen you can see the first ever program that we wrote. So the program for printing the word hello world to the output window of this IDE has been compiled and executed in the previous video. So we just did it in the previous video. Let me just show you that. I am just compiling and running this program. You can see the output window has been printed with the string or the word hello world. So now in this video we are just going to see the file generation sequence once you click on the compile button right over here. So once you click on the compile button right over here the program will be scanned for errors using the program called compiler available in this dev C++ software and as the first step or as the first stage preprocessors will be added to this program. So preprocessors are nothing but as you can see here this has include stdio.h is a preprocessor which is useful for including a particular source file to the C program or a C project file. So in that preprocessor stage all the preprocessors available in the program that you have written will be extracted and it will be added to your program as a whole. So in our case the stdio.h file has been included in our C program for using this printf function right. So in our case the stdio.h will be extracted and all the variables and function definitions available in this stdio.h will be extracted and it will be added right over here in the top of the main function and a particular file will be generated called .i file. So this file that we have created is nothing but hello world .c. So this is the source file that we wrote for executing the program in our computer and after the preprocessor stage a particular file will be generated by the IDE called .i file. Let me just show you that file. So you cannot visualize these files because it will be taken care by the IDE that you are using. This and all will be hidden behind the missions and we will be visualizing only the output in the IDE. So I have fetched the files from backward and I am showing you all those files for your better understanding. So here you can see this is the .i file generated for the same program written right over here. So you can clearly see I am just moving downwards. Here is the actual program that we have written that is the main function that we wrote right over here. And above the main function we are having a huge set of function definitions right over here in the top. And all these function definitions belongs to stdio.h. So let me just show you this printf as I said this printf is a particular function available in this stdio.h. So let me just search for printf. You can see here it is. So this is the printf function which we used in our program for printing the hello world word to the output window. So we are just utilizing this printf function only in this whole stdio.h file for printing the hello world to our output window. So after the successful completion of generation of this .i file after the preprocessor stage what happens is this high level program file available right over here as .i file will be converted into assembly level instruction. This C is also called as high level language because it is written in English. So this is mostly 
a human understandable language so it is called as high level language so once the preprocessor stage is complete this dot i file will be converted into assembly level instructions for execution so this is the file that is generated as dot s file after the dot i file so this is the assembly level instructions converted from that dot i file so you can clearly see this file will be containing only assembly level instructions you can see move q this is often not understandable by our humans by nature but it is if you study a little you can understand it so the dot i file will be converted into assembly level instructions and dot s file is generated and after this also the dot s file will be converted into machine level code that is nothing but zeros and ones understandable by only machines that is either a computer or a microcontroller so further this assembly level instructions are converted into dot o file that is this dot s file is converted into dot o object file for executing in a computer or a microcontroller so that dot o file will be having only zeros and ones and we cannot visualize anything even like this in dot s file so i hope you understood that so i hope you understood the c programming file generation sequence let me just conclude it for you so this is the file generation sequence of c program and on the left you can see the dot c file which is the source file that we wrote in the ide that is in our host machine and once the dot c file is generated we will be compiling the c program that is with the dot c extension with a particular compiler available in the ide and once the compiler finds the dot c file to be error free the first stage of manipulation of this dot c file is it will be undergoing a pre processor stage that is the dot c file will be extracted with the source files added in the dot c file that is as we included the stdio.h in that program so that stdio.h header file with various function definitions and declarations will be included in this dot c file and another file called dot i file will be generated which is the addition of all the function definitions and declarations written in that source file and once the dot i file is generated the dot i file undergoes a transformation from high level language to assembly level instructions and dot s file is generated so dot i file is nothing but a c program language which is understandable by the humans like us so that is called as high level language and that high level language will be converted into assembly level instructions and the dot s file is generated and once the dot s file is generated the assembly level instructions will be converted into machine level opcodes and finally dot o file is generated that is nothing but the object file required for execution in the host machine or in a microcontroller so this machine level opcodes are nothing but zeros and ones which is only understandable by the machine that is running either it is a computer or it may be a microcontroller so this is the c program file generation sequence i hope you understood it better See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.